Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Thursday, May 22nd, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. Another planet in our solar system? It may be true, an extreme cousin for Pluto. Possible dwarf planet has been discovered. And we've got severe weather popping up across central Texas and a lot to talk about. Keep calm. It's boom time. We've got a nor'easter bringing a nasty mix of wet, windy, and chilly conditions to the northeast, including some heavy snow for the higher elevations. Expect unpleasant weather late this week, including right now. And the nor'easter could bring record cold temperatures across New Hampshire. I love how this headline says record cold high temperatures. That used to just be record cold temperatures. We've had five violent EF4 tornadoes so far in the U.S. in 2025. Is that unusual? Well, actually it is. We usually have between zero and six EF4s every year. So at, we are at the high end and we, we may surpass that number in the coming weeks. We've got a new NOAA hurricane season outlook, and it has been issued. More active than the average season is expected by the numbers. NOAA expects 13 to 19 named storms to form in 2025, six to 10 of which will become hurricanes, and three to five of which will reach Cat 3 status or stronger, according to the new outlook released on Thursday. So there are the new numbers in the Atlantic Basin coming out from NOAA. Quick look over at Tornado HQ, and you can see the only warnings and watches for any severe weather, all in Texas and all coming just in the last 45 minutes. Six severe weather alerts for Brown, Callahan, Coleman, Kendall, Gillespie, Runnels, Concho, McCullough, Coke, Brown, Shackelford, and Stevens Counties. So heed the warnings and go over to TornadoHQ.com for live severe weather maps and warnings. Well, all live. And you can even turn on those audio alerts so you don't even have to watch the internets. And here is the full forecast. Areas of severe thunderstorms and excessive rainfall through the weekend. Severe thunderstorms are expected across portions of the central into the southern plains into Sunday with large hail, severe gusts as the main threat, the threat for heavy to excessive rainfall and possible flash flooding will return to the south central U.S. Friday into the weekend. You can see that big green bullseye. Those are the crosshairs for the flooding. And here in the pink and the orange, we've got those severe warnings, thunderstorm warnings and uh, threats happening now. A quick look over here at the GFS model. You can see that nor'easter bombing out at 997 millibars and that severe weather popping up here in central Texas. We'll move it through three, six hours. The snow will be happening overnight in New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine. It's insane because it is the end of May, hey, hey. And the severe weather will dissipate overnight, but it will explode here, boom, on Saturday. And that is the crosshairs for the flooding potential that we just saw on that map. So heed the warnings and take a look at the total snowfall from this event up in the northeast. Areas could be picking up more than six or eight inches of snow. Ho, ho, ho. Seismic update. Oh, huge rumbler once again in Greece. A 6.2 popping off there. Uh, I didn't see any reports of damage, but let's take a look. Well, there were tsunami warnings issued after the 6.2 magnitude earthquake strikes off of Crete's coast in Greece, uh, but there's no reported damage. The trembler was felt as far as Israel, holy macaroni, uh, even in Italy and France and Portugal, and across the entire Aegean Sea. The Greek fire brigade said all its forces were on high alert across Crete, though it added it had not received any calls. So it looks like no damage from that quake. Good news there. Interesting rumbler up here in Svalbard, 4.5. And we did have a 5.0 in El Salvador and a 4.2 off the coast of Oregon. 
Worldwide Volcano News for May 22nd, Thursday. Sakurajima, first on the last 9,000-foot blast. Popo to 20,000 feet. Ibu, ground report of an eruption. Svartsvangi Volcano, we're talking about the Reykjanes Peninsula. Uplift continues, and we're waiting for the next phase to happen there. Raventador, volcanic ash on going to 14,000 feet. Sakurajima, 12,000-foot blast there. Volcanic ash ongoing at Sangay. Semenu, who knew now you do 15,000 foot blast. Ibu to 7,000 foot. Dukono, an eruption was reported. Raventador, 14,000 foot puff. Sakurajima, 12,000 foot. Sangay to 21,000 foot. Svartsvengi, the area beneath the region continues to swell. Semenu, 15,000 foot. Ibu to 7,000. Liwatobi, 7,000 there. Wrapping up the list is Dukono with continuous volcanic ash observed. Which brings us to space weather for the day. A few small, tiny pinprick sunspots, very low-level flaring up into the low sea range. Three-day geomagnetic forecast is all quiet and really nothing going on as we are diving down into solar minimum. Apparently, physicists were completely wrong about how gravity works. Well, we've been saying this for a decade. But a new theoretical proposal published in the Journal of Reports on Progress in Physics, well, is making some bold claims about our previous understanding of quantum physics, mainly that we were wrong. The proposed theory grapples with the fact that quantum mechanics or modern physics and general relativity, Einstein's theory, both describe the universe perfectly, but are mathematically incompatible with each other. In order to make them work, the proposal suggests scrapping almost everything we know about gravity. Instead, the authors touch up the theory to match known and observable physics, something they call the unified gravity, something we call electric universe. A new paper coming out just days ago, Amber in the Cretaceous Deep Sea Deposits, reveal large-scale tsunamis. Apparently, 116 to 114 million years ago, back in the Cretaceous, large-scale tsunamis were destroying coastal areas and rapidly transporting huge amounts of plants and other debris over long distances. All the links will be below. And a new article, An Extreme Cousin for Pluto, a possible dwarf planet has been discovered at the solar system's edge, you could see the huge orbit arc here of 2017 OF201. This is the new sub-Neptunian planet. And there is our solar system there in red. That's Pluto. And this is, look at that. Look at the orbit of 2017 OF201, almost like it's a comet. It's now turned off. And here is the interesting part. Its orbit, its extreme orbit, takes the object 25,000 years to complete, suggesting a complex history of gravitational interactions. Is this the object that controls the great year? Our wobble in space? Is it the destroyer of man? Well, Lee and I will break it all down on our radio show Saturday, noon Mountain Time on Revolution Radio. Now, scientists just caught lightning firing off gamma ray blasts. The split-second spark may explain how storms become radioactive and how lightning really begins. Our universe may actually be a plasma universe. And here is the paper, Downward Terrestrial Gamma Ray Flash, associated with collisions of lightning leaders. We'll also talk on this topic on Saturday. Now, a University of Chicago study finds tooth sensitivity may be linked to ancient fish. Yeah, they've now just figured out that human teeth may have come from the fishes. The sensitive interior of human teeth might have originated from seemingly unlikely place. The sensory tissue in fish that were swimming in Earth's, Earth's oceans 465 million years ago. While our teeth are covered in hard enamel, 
It's dentin, the tooth's inner layer responsible for carrying sensory information to the nerves that reacts to the pressure of a hard bite, pain, or changes like extreme cold or sweetness. And while well, scientists claim they may have the link and we'll link the article below. And if you didn't know, Rex Bear and I have the ultimate petroglyph panel tour coming up in just about six weeks. It's actually a little bit more than five weeks in the Canyon of the Ancients near Cortez, Colorado. We're also going to check out Skull Castle Ruins and many other petroglyphs in the region. So join us for a one-of-a-kind event exploring the Canyon of the Ancients in southwest Colorado in places, well, that normal people just don't get to go. And you will see some of the most amazing petroglyphs and ruins in your entire life. We guarantee it. So we hope to see you in the desert. Just go on over to Slick Ticks. The link is below for the ultimate petroglyph panel tour coming up June 28th, Saturday, June 28th in the Canyon of the Ancients. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and share this with like-minded people. And please grab your tickets now. There's just 25 available for the ultimate petroglyph panel tour. And that's a boom. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. Mm -hmm.